Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Eric DeHaan. I'm the Director of Alumni Relations at Seoul Foreign School, and it's my pleasure today uh, to invite uh, an old friend to the virtual speaker series, uh, Ms. Dr. Harlan Liso. Harlan is, uh, had been an administrator at uh, various international schools become, before coming to SFS and really uh, making a mark both as a principal and the head of school. And uh, we want to welcome him and uh, just jump right into it. Uh, this is gonna be fun to hear a, a bit about the past and uh, how SFS, at SFS Harlan is known as the, uh, the building president. So the building, the head of school who did a lot of building. So it'll be exciting to hear about that. So Harlan, tell us a little bit, if you will, uh, how did you end up at SFS in the first place? <laughs> Well, thank you, Eric. Uh, as uh, anybody who knows me knows, I have no trouble talking about Seoul Foreign School. So uh, I hope you've got a lot of time on your plate here because uh, I enjoy doing this. You know, I, I was uh, head of a small school in Niamey, Niger, West Africa. And uh, our daughter, Teresa, who is a part of this tonight, um, was uh, finished ninth grade and the school only went through ninth grade. So it was a matter of finding another school where she could uh, attend. And uh, we, we uh, Dick Underwood uh, made an amazing move, uh, re, uh, encouraging his board to hire me as the high school principal. Now that was amazing in two regards. One, um, I hadn't been a high school principal and my, most of my experience was elementary and middle school. And secondly, administrators at Soul Foreign School stayed a long time and we moved every two or three years. They were really worried about the fact that we would uh, not hang around long enough uh, to be a part of it. Frankly, we weren't too excited about Seoul. We're not big city folks. We uh, <laughs> enjoy the country and Seoul was kind of the antithesis of what we envisioned, but we decided that we could probably handle a three-year contract and then go somewhere where we really wanted to be after we got Teresa out of high school. Um, and uh, Strangely enough, we fell in love uh, with Korea and uh, certainly with the Korean culture, uh, the Korean people. I never did manage to pick up the language. I found it incredibly difficult. Of course, I had trouble with French when we were in Africa, so that's probably not unusual that I had trouble with Korean as well. Um, but we also fell in love with what Seoul Foreign School was all about. Uh, combining uh, rigorous academics with a Christian ethos where the people uh, were uh, welcomed uh, regardless of their religious background, but we weren't afraid to talk about who we were. And it was really exciting because the entire Israeli community moved over from Seoul International School to our school while we were there. And then we had a large number of uh, Islamic ambassadors who sent their kids to our school. Uh, and felt comfortable there. I had one tell me, uh, you know, I, I really wish my kid didn't have to put up with your religion, but to get the quality of education that we that you offer, it's a small price to pay. Uh, so our three, uh, our kids both graduated from Soforn. Our uh, they both came back to work at Soforn. They both married Soforn school teachers, and our grandkids attended. So our three year. Uh, commitment ended up being three generations. So uh, it was quite a surprise for everybody. Oh, I think you're Mike. Uh, so tell me a little bit about uh, some of the, the uh, other faculty and staff and some of the programming that was happening at that time. You know, for us, uh, much of what we appreciated were the people with whom we were involved, uh, uh, starting out with the students. I mean, uh, it was such a joy to work with the student body at Seoul Foreign. Uh, I, I made it a point to try and know the names of all of our high school students there, and, and it was easy and fun to do because they were such remarkable people. Um, very few discipline problems. I, I don't much like discipline, and thankfully, that was not a big part of my job. Um, but one of the most fond memories was working with the leadership retreats. Uh, every fall, we'd bring the, the leaders from the, the high school to a retreat center and spend a, um, a, a weekend uh, developing them. And 
as I have looked at the alumni and seen what people have done over the years, it's pretty clear that an awfully large number of our students have become very successful in the years since they left uh, the school. And then, then the staff. I mean, uh, I, I realized that it wasn't about me. People didn't send their kids to so foreign school because I was head of school. They sent them there because we had such great programs and outstanding teachers. And my primary job was to make sure that we didn't diminish that. We brought in quality people who are extraordinary teachers, but were also committed to the uh, Christian ethos of the school. And that, that was challenging. Uh, back in those days, I, you know, I know today most of the teachers are hired virtually, but back in the day we attended international teacher recruitment fairs. And it was really important for us to attend enough fairs so that we interviewed enough people that we could bring in quality teachers who shared the Christian ethos of the school. Uh, many years we attended 14 different international teacher recruitment fairs and I uh, often wow. attended eight myself. Uh -huh. um, I think uh, I think I've attended more international teacher recruitment fairs than any living human being and I don't know if that's a <laughs> that's something good or bad um, but it, but it it was so important for us to do that and then the staff once we got them there the idea was to keep them uh, when we arrived, the average teacher stayed at Seoul Foreign School about two years. That meant that every year we were re recruiting half of our faculty, and you can't build a program when you're having that much turnover. So by increasing the package and by making the trying to make the work environment enjoyable for the people and satisfying and edifying, uh, by the time we left, the, the average was about five years, which I thought was great because we bring in new people every year who have new blood, new ideas, and yet we have 80% of the people there to inculcate the culture of the school into our new people, and, and it worked out really well. We uh, were blessed to have such great people uh, on faculty, but that wasn't at all. Our Korean staff uh, enabled our teachers to be successful in what they did whether they were janitors or night guards or maintenance people or secretaries, we had a committed uh, Korean staff that uh, spent most of their working adult life uh, mm -hmm. at, uh, at Seoul Foreign School and enabled our teachers to be successful in what they did. So um, we had about 300 staff total, teachers and uh, Korean staff, and it made it a point to know everyone. Uh, because each was contributing something meaningful to the school and it was important that they knew that uh, we appreciated what they were all about mm -hmm. and then sure. the admin team gosh I was so blessed to work with such great people the principals and all I, I just need to highlight uh, Langston Rogdi who was our business manager we worked together for 12 years you know so many of the people who are business managers are only focused on the money side and and Langston was focused on making the money work best for the what educational programs we could offer our kids. And so it was such a joy to work with him. The point being, <laughs> uh, staff and uh, students and people uh, was incredibly rewarding. Um, you mentioned programs. Uh, sure. You know, one, one, of the, one of the things that uh, I find uh, surprising for me is the emphasis on our performing arts. Um, I was not a performing arts person. Uh, I was, I considered myself an athlete. Uh, unfortunately, most of the people who were on my team didn't consider me an athlete, but uh, yeah. I was certainly not a uh, performing, performing arts person. Uh, and yet that's where the, uh, much of our emphasis was. Uh, shortly after I got there, I initiated a program where our high school students could earn a letter in performing arts, even as the athletes had earned a letter in uh, for athletics and interesting and, and then we got a chance to look at APAC and uh, when APAC was getting started it was largely an athletic competition uh, we already had opportunities for our students athletically so I said so foreign would only join if APAC would commit to having an equal number of performing arts activities as well as athletic activities and that uh, uh, was the way that things went. And we, we had then opportunities for our uh, performing arts students to, uh, to be engaged uh, outside of Korea in a, in a large number of, of, of areas. I remember my first uh, middle school uh, concert. 
Um, and the fact that we stayed through the whole concert suggests that we really wanted to be at Soul Foreign. Uh, it, was, uh, it was not uh, the quality of program that one could have hoped for. In fact, that year our choir, the high school choir, was a trio. We had three uh, members of our uh, student body in the high school choir. And the growth of that program was just so exciting to see. And, and then, of course, it became appropriate to find a facility that would showcase the quality of the programs that we had. And, uh, you know, as uh, someone who was not a performing arts person, it was incredibly humbling and a great honor to have had the facility uh, named in our honor. And so, um, really, really proud of how the performing arts program has developed at the school. And then, of course, academics. I mean, that, so the foundation of So Foreign School has got to be the academic program. Um, the, uh, um, we, we had uh, outstanding teachers and, and we developed, I mean, the, our reputation was among the best uh, international schools in Asia, and, and it was rightly so. I, some will remember that we competed in what was called Knowledge Master. It was a uh, it was a, comp uh, a competition uh, over the uh, internet of schools, sort of like Jeopardy or Brain Bowl or something. And uh, our school uh, participated uh, every year, and every year. Uh, that we did so, our students came in first among all the international school uh, students uh, schools in the world, and we were competitive uh, with the major uh, uh, schools, uh, big name schools in the United States. It was pretty exciting to see our kids have success in something like that internationally. Mm -hmm. um, so, of course, having Ken Jennings there for a couple of years didn't hurt. But uh, that, it was just Ken Jennings. So we, <laughs> our student body was pretty powerful. Uh, uh, and you know the uh, the other side of the program was our values in Christian education. Uh, it was it was so important uh, that we not just be an academic institution, but that we be developing people of character. And what through some of the research that we did, we came to realize that. <clears throat> values were not as disparate as one might think. There are universal values, uh, integrity, for example, and others that, uh, and so one of the things we did as a faculty was to develop uh, a list of values and then correlate them with the Christian uh, values such that we had our Christ-like attitudes, 10 Christ-like attitudes, which I think were the kind of the foundation of the, the core of what we're about. I'm so pleased that Soul Foreign continues to emphasize uh, its uh, uh, community service programs. Uh, you may be aware that uh, one of the things that happened while we were there was the development of the Dongdaewon uh, uh, North Korean uh, project, uh, where we supported a a a, a, a a uh, tuberculosis center in North Korea for, for many years. In fact, Mary, my wife, uh, made 16 trips into North Korea, uh, delivering uh, supplies and, and medicine to these care centers. And the kids did amazing activities to, to raise funds, uh, sometimes over $30,000 a year. It was, it, was, it was pretty, pretty, pretty exciting. And one could not stop talking about programs if one didn't talk about athletics. I mean, the uh, it was so much fun to be a part of kayak where we had to play against uh, Seoul American, which had some really big basketball players. We were never <laughs> as successful in basketball as with many of the other sports. But then, of course, we got APAC and our kids have been enormously successful in APAC. And then as we did with the performing arts where we uh, where we built the facility, we, we remodeled entirely the old gym so that it became a very usable facility and then put down the, uh, the, uh, the uh, grass field, the uh, uh, synthetic grass field. Uh, many of our alums were unhappy with us because they were proud of being gravel girls who had gotten <laughs> injured out on that field. Um, and yet, uh, having, uh, having the, the, uh, the field uh, with an artificial turf proved to be invaluable for everybody. So 
you know, when we talk about people and programs, those uh, were some of the, the highlights for me as to why it was such a blessing to be a part of Soul Foreign School. Sure. What were some of the kind of memorable happenings uh, that were taking place kind of in history and, and around you at the school and whatnot? Well, the year we came uh, was the year of the Seoul Olympics. And, uh, you know, how could you not be happy about that? There, uh, we, we dropped school for two weeks so we could all go to the Olympics. And, um, and nobody seemed to complain that we weren't in the school. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, um, and yet, because they did the Olympics in September, because the weather in August and July would have just been unbearable for Olympic competition, that meant that most of the people who would come had their kids in school and therefore the attendance was very bad. Mm. So we would go down every morning and uh, decide what we wanted to see. You, know, you <laughs> didn't have to have advanced tickets. You just walked up and said, I'd like to watch basketball today or whatever. And uh, it, it was, it was, pretty enjoyable. And then, of course, we had the World Cup uh, when uh, the soccer World Cup was there. And we I had never been too convinced about soccer. I, the only thing I had seen is kids soccer and they're all running around trying to get in the middle of things. But watching the World Cup, my gosh, I became I fell in love with soccer. And unfortunately, uh, we had we saw several of the matches, but uh, and and one of the memorable things was in Seoul downtown, on the big uh, screens downtown, they would have the games uh, broadcast, mm. and hundred thousand people sitting in the square watching wow. the the monitor the big screens, and when it was over, everybody picked up all the trash and it was as if nobody had been there it was just just like it would be in the states right yeah uh, or, or not yeah. um but the uh the, the fact that uh we we went back home just before the finals uh to summer leave and so we were going to watch the finals on tv couldn't find it we had to check oh. into a hotel and watch Mexican uh, cable to watch the uh, finals of the of the world cup wow um, it was as meaningful in Mex in Spanish as it was in English, but it was uh, <laughs> uh, crazy. <clears throat> One of the other memorable things, of course, Yonsei University being right next to us uh, was famous for its uh, demonstrations. Uh, lots was going on uh, there. I remember uh one of our couples uh, there was a lot of anti-american demonstrations and one of our new teaching couples who were who were uh, canadian walked through the campus carrying their canadian flag so that they would not be uh, <laughs> thought of as americans and and given a hard time but the uh one year the students took over buildings right next to the campus and uh, police decided to end that and they brought in helicopters dropping tear gas canisters, many of which landed on the balconies of our faculty apartments. Oh my this goodness. Is on, this is on the first day of school. Okay. Uh, and then the students trying to escape jumped over the wall and were running through our campus. Uh, we had them uh, running through the British school, the elementary school, <clears throat> and uh, they wanted to uh, me to allow them to walk down the hill at the end of the school day pretending that they were our high school students and of course that wasn't going to happen but I had to negotiate with the police to keep them off the campus because I didn't want a confrontation while our kids were there so we managed to get the kids out of the buildings and then when the school was done at the end of the day and the buses were gone uh, police came up and arrested this the students. Uh, but there was so many, uh, President, uh, former President Chun Duan lived just a couple blocks from the school and he, there was a big effort to, uh, by the students to do citizen arrests. And so one of my jobs was to negotiate with the police to clean the streets out at certain times so we could get our buses down the hill and take the students home. And so they would uh, charge the students and push them all back so we could get the buses through and then the students would congregate again. Uh, it was uh, exciting times. Uh, I, wow. I can tell you from firsthand experience, uh, tear gas is not fun. Um, that was crazy. One, <laughs> one, of the, uh, one of the other things in that time uh, that was interesting is we often, we always had a keynote speaker at graduation. And one year, uh, he was the American ambassador. And one of the graduates 
was an Iranian girl. Uh, she was the daughter of the Iranian ambassador. And of course, all of us standing on stage when the students come across to get their diploma are shaking hands with all of them, but you can't shake hands with uh, the Iranian ambassador's daughter. So we're bowing like this. I wish I'd had a picture of the American ambassador bowing to the daughter of the Iranian mm. ambassador. I'm sure that would have uh, ended his career. Um, and many people don't know that we built Youngsan International School of Seoul. Yes, uh, Seoul Foreign uh, built that campus. Uh, I had uh, been concerned that Seoul Foreign School was full and we were, there weren't places for students to, to live and uh, students to attend. And so I encouraged the Korean government to develop another school and they gave the land over uh, above uh, uh, Youngsan for the school. And they contracted with us to uh, run the school. Our intention was to move the British school over there and run a K-12 British school on that campus and have a K-12 uh, school, uh, American school on the existing campus. We got the school built and everything was going well. I hired the teachers and in April before we were supposed to open in August, the government came and said, you know, um, we know we had arranged for you just to rent the facilities, but we've invested so much. We really don't think that we can just allow that. What we need to set the curriculum. We need to set the tuition. We need to hire the head. We need, and I said, and what do we do? And, uh, and they said, well, you do what we tell you. And we said, no. And we backed out and I paid off all the teachers who we had hired to come because we didn't have jobs for them. And eventually International Christian School moved in there. And so, yes, uh, can thank Seoul Foreign School for uh, its existence uh, today. Mm. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the things we didn't talk about was facilities. And uh, as you mentioned at the beginning, uh, this was a great time to be at Seoul Foreign School because we were growing. I think we were about a thousand students when I got there and about 1500 students when we left. And of course there was a need for more uh, facilities. But beyond that, Dick Underwood was a genius and, and an, an incredibly inventive uh, head of school for 30 years and brought Seoul Foreign School to the place where it was ready to, to, uh, to move beyond being the, the basic uh, facilities that were there. And so our goal was to try and uh, make the facilities comparable to the quality of the program that were already in existence at the school. And so we began and my hardest sell uh, with the school board was the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. um, the board just could not see how we needed to have a swimming pool to be a school. And many of them believed that I personally wanted a swimming pool so I could swim. But the truth was I'm not a swimmer. And to this day, I've never been in that pool. Um, ah. but, <laughs> But we got it and that was, that was kind of the start. And then we did multiple expansions. The old high school, we expanded that three different times, built another floor on it. We expanded the British school four times, doubled the size of the British school. We expanded the middle school uh, while, while we were there. We bought the team property, the Evangelical Alliance Mission had property above the school. And we bought that and put in apartments up there for our faculty. Um, we built several apartment buildings during that time. We built a parking garage, uh, um, which was kind of fun because uh, the, the first day that we used it, uh, it turns out that the contractors had put a more slick surface on the, than was appropriate. And we had three accidents in the parking garage. Um, it, was <laughs> not, it was not an auspicious start to the, to the use of the parking, but it's been extraordinarily useful since. And of course, the business office and the Performing Arts Center uh, were really, really important additions to the school. Uh, see Edie there, you know, I was talking about how the music program developed. We've always had a legacy for drama from Rona Rob uh, up through continuing with Edie. And it was uh, easy to justify a, a facility that would showcase the quality of programs that we had. And as I mentioned, we renovated the old gym and put the soccer field down. We built a new uh, elementary school with uh, the <laughs> hall and, and the new Rob Hall that we uh, had had there. 
and then technology was huge. When, when I arrived, we were using uh, Korean made Apple IIEs. They were knockoffs. They were not even legitimate IIEs. And uh, over the years to try and make sure that our students had access to the quality of technology that, uh, that they uh, needed uh, both for school and beyond um, was, was pretty important. And then of course we built several apartment buildings so that our teachers could continue to live on campus. And all of this was done without a penny of debt. We all never went into debt. We never did fundraising. Uh, we waited until we had the funds and then we did the construction. Uh, but when you're in a time when the school's growing, it was pretty exciting to be a, a, a part of that. Uh, anyway, uh, enough of that. Go on. What, what else you got for me? Sure. So uh, before we get into questions, what, what have you been up to since uh, 2008 then? <laughs> well, I, I knew I was done. Uh, I was uh, 2008. I was uh, ready for retirement. Uh, but in 2009, I became interim head of school at Shanghai American uh, for a small job, uh, uh, 3,500 students on two campuses. And, um, but it was really interesting because when I was at Seoul Foreign, I was the uh, chair of APAC when we expanded from six uh, schools to 12. And then when I went to Shanghai, Shanghai was the chair. And so I was chair when we added Hanoi because uh, Osaka dropped out. So I spent a year there, then I was done. Uh, except that Tom Penland called and said, would I be willing to take over a, a two month interim head of school job at Gyeonggi Suwon International School. Uh, two years later, um, I was, uh, I had finished uh, that program and uh, and I also served, uh, worked with ISS on international head searches. I've uh, continued to work with Western Association of Schools and Colleges, WASC accrediting schools. I've visited more than 65 different campuses uh, um, doing accreditation visits and now it's all volunteer. Uh, no, Nobody's making me work anymore. I just kind of uh, enjoy being a part uh, of something still being able to contribute back a little bit uh, for the, all the blessings that I've received over the years uh, of, of being a part of international education. Um, we're, one of the things I have continued to do is serve on the Friends of Seoul Foreign School Board. Friends of Seoul Foreign School is uh, an organiz a not-for-profit organization in the States that does a couple things. One, it handles an endowment uh, for the school and invests that. But secondly, we receive donations. If you wanted, to, somebody wanted to make a donation to Seoul Foreign School and receive U.S. tax credits, they do it through uh, Friends of Seoul Foreign School. And next year uh, will be my 30th year of serving on the Friends of Seoul Foreign School Board. It's a way to stay active and supporting a school that I believe so strongly in. We're hopeful that this next spring when we hold our annual Friends of Seoul Foreign School meeting, it may be in Korea. Uh, would love to get back if, uh, if Korea is open to our, our it's coming. It's getting better all the time. That would better. be great. Yeah, I haven't seen the new high school. So I was ah. under construction when I was there last. So we we'll, would we'll look forward to that. Sure. Uh, I want to leave plenty of time for questions. Uh, any, any questions there? If you can just unmute and go ahead. Hi, Harlan. Hi. It's so good to see you. And oh. um, I get really emotional um, listening to you and um, all these stories, which I wanted to tell you, Jack and I try to share a lot of these stories every year with the new teachers and um, in our slideshow present or our presentation that we do and so forth, trying to give them, you're such a huge part of that presentation and that legacy, you and your whole family. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Amos. <laughs> Hi, Mary. I see Mary <laughs> there too. It's no just um, she's, so great she doesn't to see think all she's of you. Me. <laughs> we just we love you and again you know I'm a very emotional person so I'm emotional saying that but um I'm just so grateful for the example 
that you gave us of leadership. And it's something that has shaped and informed me every day that I've been here at SFS. And it's because of you in many ways, believing in our arts program and our theater program that we have the program today. And um, I'm just so grateful with all my heart for that. And um, with the spiritual legacy that you and your family left, we miss you all very much. I hope you know that, um, but you're here with us and that's the beauty of it. I know this isn't a question, so I'm sorry, Eric, but I just <laughs> wanted to have a chance to say this and um, for people to hear this because it's, um, it's so important. And I always tell people when they leave, you know, that they're still with us, their names, their, um, the words that they spoke. I just, I just heard my sister, who's now a counselor here, who knows uh, Harlan very well, knows the Lisos very well. And she just said a couple of days ago, I remember when Harlan said, perception is reality, guys. Perception is reality. So, you know, <laughs> so anyway, that was just about four days ago, Harlan. So oh, I'm not cool. um, making this up, you know, it's a very <laughs> real thing. Harlan also said one time, um, a neat desk is not always the sign of a great teacher. And I, um, in all my abstract uh, random um, approach to art sometimes, really appreciated that Harlan. And <laughs> you really saw that being a good teacher goes a lot deeper than dotting your I's and crossing your T's. And thank you for believing in those of us who have interesting ways into educating students. <laughs> um, I just wanted to know how your family is. And oh, and by the way, shamelessly, I would like to invite everyone to zoom in to our play tonight at 630, yeah. The Imaginary Invalid. I know that's no help to the people in America because that's just terrible. I don't think anybody can laugh before 530 in the morning, but it is a great show and it's on Zoom and we're so grateful to have another alum, John Black, who's our tech yeah. director, to set up a screen in the back of our theater with all the Zoom faces um, from all over the world watching the play. So, um, but anyway, that shameless, I'm shamelessly out there with our latest um, show. In spite of COVID, we march on. And I just wanna know about your beautiful family, Harlan. Thank you. That's very, very kind. <clears throat> um, uh, Mary, who you may or may not have seen in the background just last week, had uh, knee replacement surgery. And oh. so she's, uh, and today we went for a walk. And so she's uh, making great progress. Uh, it's good to have her back out and about again. Um, but uh, <clears throat> we, we spent, uh, uh, Teresa and, and her family, of course, are still in, uh, in, in Washington State, and Amos and his family are in Guangzhou. Uh, and uh, all, you know, we, we kept saying that if we raised our kids, sending them to these great international schools, they'd get good jobs and take care of us in our old age, and they both became <laughs> teachers. Uh, so um, so um, we're grateful that they did because they're very good at what they do. And uh, and now our, our uh, Joshua is a sophomore at university and Daniel oh. is a senior in high school. And then uh, Malachi and Josiah are still, uh, Malachi is in first grade already. So it, it's, uh, it's it, life has been good, God has been good. And um, we, we know that the experience that we had at Seoul Foreign School as a family, uh, shaped who each and all of us are. And uh, <clears throat> it was people like you and others uh, who had an impact on our kids that I uh, credit for um, uh, playing a big role in who they are today. So we're, we're really grateful for that. Well, I just, before I mute myself, I just wanna say, when you come back, we will welcome you with open arms. Trying to show my arms, but they don't show. <laughs> Sorry, there they are. Open arms. <laughs> Thank you, Edie. All right, who else has a, a question for Harlan? Hi, sure, Eric. if, if I, oh, Hi, go, go ahead, go ahead, Mary. I beg your pardon. Um, I just wanna um, say that we're happy to hear that you and your family are doing well, and I hope Mary's healing is speedy and 
and uh, she's not in too much discomfort. And good to know that she's out walking about. Well, wow, that's a, a good sign that everything's going well. And I want to piggyback on what Edie said as far as uh, the appreciation that we have for you and your leadership. And uh, SFS wouldn't be the same place it was for us all those years if it wasn't for you guys. And we sure appreciate that. And thank you so much. Yeah, really kind. <coughs> very, very kind. Yeah. We, uh, you know, I, it would be uh, unfortunate if I didn't emphasize what we got out of our experience. Um, you know, the uh, the board was very supportive of us while we were there. Um, they recognized there was value in the projects that we were doing, the programs we were developing, but also making so foreign school known around the world. And so the board encouraged me to serve on international boards. I served on the Association for the Advancement of International Education. I served on the uh, Council of International Schools and uh, the Air Coast boards. So that when people uh, who were living in one of these other places uh, went to their head of school and said, we're moving Korea, you got any sense as to uh, what kind of a school we should consider? They would be able to say, well, we know Harlan and so foreign is a good place for you. And so the, I, I have great respect for the foresight of the board to allow us to uh, be involved. And then of course, uh, um, talking about honors, a, my last year there, I was uh, awarded the superintendent of the year award for uh, all of the international schools. And they're among the thousands of international schools to have had that honor was, uh, it said a lot about the success that so foreign school uh, experienced. And it, it clearly, as I said earlier, it's not all about me. It's about what the school was able to do and move forward. And it was such a blessing to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Paul, you had a question? I did. First of all, I mean, what an honor. Um, as soon as I saw the name, I, I had to I had to join in. <laughs> That's a great. Well, thank you. Yeah, I heard so many great things about you, Dr. Liso. And there's that Koreanness in me that uh, I feel like I need to ask for your permission in order for me to call you Harlan. <laughs> Not <laughs> Please don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, yeah, just once again, so my, my name is Paul Kim, and um, it's great to see Marion and Teresa and Amos. Oh, my goodness. Uh, what a privilege and honor again. And um, I'm currently working as a Christian ministry leader at SFS, um, and a Amos has done a, such a wonderful job in that position. And then it is my honor to continue to carry on that legacy. And I can't believe it, but this is my eighth year already. So, um, yeah, time flies, uh, or maybe SFS flies. <laughs> Right. So, um, yeah, with that said, I, I just wanted to say I, I'm very um, encouraged and I'm very inspired. And I, I always say I just love listening to people's stories and their life stories, especially because uh, it's one thing for you to learn about history and the figures and the numbers and the math. But for you to hear a story of real life people, like and what's happening during that time through their lens. Um, and those are the things that I was able to definitely hear from you. So I appreciate that. And uh, I, I, there, there's this one question that I always had um, because I hear so many great things about you at, at SFS everywhere I go. And it made me wonder, what is it about uh, Harlan that uh, separated him from other great leaders that we have? And I could tell right away from the beginning of your speech, you're about people, right? It, it was so interesting for me to hear just the constant theme of how you value and treasure the individual that you come across in your life. So with that said, um, I just the one quick question that I have for you is that, yes, yeah, that sense of community and longevity, please bear in mind that for the past eight years at SFS, that a lot has happened, right? With the full IB program, as well as the new building, new structure. And then every year, uh, for various reasons, we had a close to 30 to sometimes 40 teachers coming and going, new teachers, to a point where um, it was normal when I first came here that we had teachers that were over seven years plus. But now, uh, even when it was my sixth year, I realized I was, I'm one of the veterans now, right? So with that in mind, May I ask, what are some things uh, during your leadership that you uh, 
what are some acts, I guess, and what are some things that you have done to treasure community and also longevity in a sense that let's really keep uh, whoever that we hire here at SFS? Good, good, uh, good question. And I, and I, <clears throat> I wish there were an easy answer. Uh, as I am often prone to say, for every really complicated question, there is a simple solution that simply won't work. Um, all all uh, <laughs> complex uh, questions require complex answers. <clears throat> you know, I, I think that um, <clears throat> much of what we were talking about was the uh, uh, finding ways to make sure that the people that were involved in the school were heard. So I, I developed uh, a... Uh, um, evenings where I would invite the whole faculty to come out and just ask any questions they wanted. Uh, I didn't have a, an agenda, just, uh, and I promised that I'd be honest. I did the same thing with parents. Uh, I had an open meeting and said, you're all welcome to come. And the first time we did that, we had a, an auditorium full of people. Um, and over time, it got down to where just a few people would show up, maybe because they thought I wasn't going to do anything anyway, but uh, maybe also because we were addressing some of the things that they had concerns for. I, I created a faculty advisory committee, so I had several teachers representing the different groups and would sit and listen to them to try and understand what was happening. They, they didn't have any obligation to report back or do anything, just Tell me what they're hearing so that I could be able to respond appropriately. Um, and, you know, I, I, I think there's so much to be said about people feeling valued <clears throat> and uh, knowing everybody, uh, going out and talking to people, uh, being available um, was, uh, was, was, I think, valuable. Also, my, my personality is not one of conflict. Uh, <laughs> I remember I had an elementary school teacher who had really screwed up. And so he, he, I called him in my office and we sat and talked for quite a while and he thanked me for our time together. And he said he went, he went back to his classroom and called me and he said, you just ringed me out, didn't you? Uh, it was pretty clear that I hadn't been as strong as I thought I had been in communicating with him. <clears throat> but I think the whole idea is uh, honoring people and showing that uh, in any way that you can. It doesn't have to be big. You know, we, uh, we didn't always uh, do what everybody wanted, uh, but at least I think people thought that they were heard, and knew that they were heard, and, and appreciated the fact that they, uh, they had the opportunity. Um, you know, I, you were talking about the construction. I was thinking of you there in the, in the Christian Ministries office. <clears throat> One of the uniquenesses of Seoul Foreign School is, that many of you know, um, it was built on what was a Korean cemetery. Um, and every now and then, including when we built the new performing art, uh, Rob Hall, and that we found a grave that hadn't been found before. And that uh, kind of leads to uh, all kinds of stories about ghosts and uh, whatever at so foreign school. Um, but it, uh, we, we treasure the, the land that was there. You know, people uh, don't realize that uh, it was way out of Seoul, outside of Seoul when, that, when the campus was built out there. I got a letter from uh, uh, a lady who said that she had been a student at the school uh, and that her parents were buried in the, uh, in the uh, missionary cemetery way out of Seoul. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, when, even when I was there, it was right in the middle of Seoul. So it, uh, it's developed around there. But uh, sorry, I get, as with all administrators, I get a little verbose, but uh, I hope you get the idea. <laughs> Brooks, you had a question, I believe? Yes. Hello, Harlan. I've never seen you or listened to you. So I was interested because you represent an era um, that's different than mine. And my good friend, Sarah, who I know as Sally, mm -hmm. we were, um, we were from, we graduated in 73. So a little uh, bit, a yeah. little bit before you. So all these new structures, Sorry, Sally, what was that one? Hmm. 
you're you're muted. I think she's saying you graduated in 71. 71. Oh, 71. <laughs> Thank you. Thank sure. you. Well, well last sure. time Eric interviewed me, it was about 73. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> so that was on my mind. Um, but you're talking about this rather large um, construction uh, buildings. And it sounds like so much uh, was done under your command, your time there. And I, I wanted to know if, if you could give me an idea of a pie that represents where this funding came from. Maybe where are maybe two or three of the major pieces? Where does that funding come? Because you said you did it without owing anything. So fantastic. How, yeah. how does that happen? <laughs> well, I, I really can't take much credit for it. Before I got there, uh, um, Robert Riggs, who was uh, a, a uh, treasurer on the school board, convinced uh, the board that they should, in every budget, um, put 15% additional money into what he called the plant fund. And so for that one year, they increased it increased tuition by the two or 3% that they would normally increase it by plus 15%. And that, mm -hmm. that one year was hard for everybody to take because it was a huge increase. But after that, that 15% was built into the budget. And so 15% of our income every single year went towards plant fund, construction, new buses, uh, major uh, projects like that. So we, uh, we just, waited for those funds to accumulate to where we were uh, had enough to be able to uh, build the Arlen, building that Arlen, we my, my my question is okay that's that's the funding but where did that what's the source of that funding is it from uh, religious organizations outside or inside from companies individuals it's from all of that but what's what are the bigger pieces of the pie that funds a school like Soul Foreign School? Um, it, it was almost exclusively tuition. I mean, we, we charged uh -huh. a lot of money. Thanks. We, we charged a lot of money. We, we did have a program in place where all of the missionaries got dramatic discounts so that they could afford to send their kids to the school. But we increased knowing that most of our students were from the business community and that they had the resources to pay for a quality education and wanted a quality education. We, uh, we raised tuition enough that over the years, we would have the revenues that were needed. Okay, thanks. Other questions? <clears throat> Eric and uh, Harlan, thank you so much for this time. I'm uh, dialing in. My name is, I see uh, Alta Ego. Hi, Paul. Um, <laughs> the, I have no relations to Pastor Paul, but uh, I'm a parent of a first grader at SFS. And I apologize, oh. it's a little noisy. Today is a Saturday activity day, so I'm waiting for my little one about a street down from school. Um, and I am really honored that I have this opportunity to listen in. Um, and, and the key takeaway was that Terry, uh, that we built uh, Yongsan Internationals. So, so those are really good insights for me. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> the, my question to you, Harlan, is as a former head of school and with a great passion for SFS, any advice for parents of the school that you wish you could tell every parent to do um, to make the school a better place. Wow, uh, another easy one. You guys are tough. Uh, <laughs> um, to me, the, the key is getting involved. You know, as, as so many, uh, particularly in our Korean community, uh, left the school up to the school. And it is so much better when we have parents who are active in supporting, not only helping with uh, uh, homework and whatever, but uh, being willing to serve on boards, being willing to uh, take active roles in, in the school and to um, uh, 
enable the school to be uh, to know that the parent community is being heard. Um, when when I arrived uh, in uh, eighty eight, I guess it was the uh, this there was still quite a large missionary community. Um, and uh, when I left, there maybe were five missionary kids at the school, um, and the community had changed. And many of our students were now uh, Korean American students, uh, and so the. Uh, not surprisingly, the, the goals that uh, some of our parents had were different from what some of the parents uh, had had previously. And so it was a matter of if, if they're not willing to express those goals, if they're not willing to be a part of the conversation, it's hard for us then to, to move forward and do what it is that needs to happen. And so I would, uh, I would say that as frustrating as it is to deal with controversy, um, if we don't know what's out there, we can't deal with it at all. And so I would encourage all parents to be willing to, to step up and, and be heard. Great, I think we got time for maybe one or two more questions. Uh, ben? Thank you. If I may address you also as Harlan, thank you very please, much. Please, uh, we've met uh, very briefly at some of the reunions, one in Chicago, yes, I think. And, I remember. Uh, and my, my two sisters also came. I graduated in 1965. So, um, you know, it's it was uh, uh, Dick Underwood's uh, era. Yeah. <laughs> and he was, uh, he was very, he was very important to me as a person, uh, a good, a good leader. Uh, when I was uh, in high school and uh, uh, have great memories of him. I, I think the thing that I, the burden of my life has been is I look like this, but I was raised in Korea and lived in Japan for much of my adult life and started my career there. And so I don't know where I belong. <laughs> uh, you know, and uh, uh, so I, I spent most of my life trying to figure out who am I and where do I belong? And if yeah. I know that, what do I do? And uh, so uh, I, I'm, the question I have is, uh, how do you prepare, or how did you prepare when you were guiding your teachers, uh, the, the, the students who were getting ready to leave Korea and go to the US or go to Canada or go to Europe, uh, <laughs> prepare them for what they might um, uh, encounter? Uh, one of the things that some of my friends when I went to college told about me is that um, I kept bowing to everybody, <laughs> like Koreans. So, uh, you know, uh, so those, those are small things, but it's, it's helping students to realize that they're going to confront or they're going to uh, experience uh, cultural, uh, you know, disparities or disillusionment. Uh, and they're going to, you know, uh, have some difficulty uh, getting uh, to assimilate into, yeah. you know, the mm -hmm. country of their of their passport rather than the country mm -hmm. where they feel is their heart, you know. Understood. So um, I'm, I'm sure you, uh, in, you know, engage the teachers in some of those, but I'd like to hear how you think about that. Well, just, Your children I, are probably I, in the same position as I was. <laughs> I, I suspect there's a commonality there, yeah. I... Um, uh, your your comment about bowing uh, was was meaningful because as I told you I went and spent a year at Shanghai America, and I assumed that there would be some commonalities in culture. But Chinese don't bow to anybody, and so <laughs> there I was bowing to everybody in China, and I was being uh, uh, told that I was not behaving appropriately. And even now, to this day, when I go to the grocery store and pay my bill, I put my hand on my elbow and wow. give them the money and everybody backs away. What is, what's wrong with this guy? It's, it's one of those things that you just built into your, uh, your psyche. <clears throat> You're probably, you know, when you were at the reunion in uh, Chicago, uh, we, may have, we may have talked about third culture kids. Uh, and right. If, right. if that's the term that's not familiar, I'd encourage you to look into it. But <clears throat> What, what we have, one of the things that we did was, uh, was to be involved with an organization called Inter Interaction, which is uh, third culture kid oriented. It helps people understand that uh, if you are growing up in a culture other than your passport culture, you probably uh, 
um, have uh, uh, more commonalities with other people who grew up in those different cultures than you do with the people with your own passport. And so we would uh, we brought in people to work with the kids every every year to uh, work with them on understanding who they were, why they were different, and why why they were, could be important, why what they had to offer could be really meaningful to the world because of the perspectives that they brought. Um, and so I'm not sure how successful we were with that, but uh, we recognized uh, that. The, the issues uh, were uh, very real. And in fact, one of the issues that we dealt with was the fact that our, our Korean students thinking, Korean American students thinking that they were in Korea, they didn't have to worry about this third culture kid stuff, but many of them got in deep trouble in a taxi because they didn't behave like a, a, a good little Korean kid when they were there, they didn't know how, they had grown up elsewhere. So I think that the uh, the emphasis we put on that was to uh, to work with our students with outside resources to to emphasize the third culture kid uh, components that uh, they dealt with. I, I always felt that a kid who grew uh, who went to school at Seoul Foreign School was less likely to go home to their home country and have as many of the um, uh, beliefs about their opponents as they might have. We, uh, one of my examples, we had uh, the daughter of the Iranian ambassador and the son of the Israeli ambassador in the same class. Uh, now, they didn't get married, but uh, I'm pretty convinced that when they went home, they would have seen people as people as opposed to the stereotypes that they may have grown up with. And thus, uh, growing up in an in an international school with multiple uh, backgrounds seemed to me to be the ideal experience for our young people in terms of the, preparing them to work well in the world out there. Thank you, I very much agree with you. And I've spent my whole life thinking I'm a bridge. Uh, Good. <laughs> and I'm living in Minnesota. So I call myself the, you know, a bridge between, uh, a, a, a bridge across the Pacific from the land of 10,000 lakes. <laughs> well, well, said. Made of soda. <laughs> well said. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Harlan. Very, very appreciate that. Wonderful. Well, we're we're out of time, so uh, hey. we want to thank Harlan for his uh, sharing today. Uh, I'm going to restop the recording. If there's people who want to hang around and ask some personal questions to Harlan, that's uh, that'd be all right. But I uh, want to thank you all for coming, and again, put in. If you're getting up early in the States, uh, the pre the play tonight, 6.30 uh, Korea time, right, Edie? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the world is <laughs> Sorry, shrinking. We can, we can see a play all the way around the world. So. I know. Wonderful. Thank you all. Thank you, Eric, for this opportunity. At, uh, you know, at, uh, our time in Korea help me define what I believe a quality international education is all about and so foreign school exemplified that. And it's important to know that, uh, that uh, I've, I'm honored to have been a part of it and uh, grateful to have had that opportunity. Uh, obviously we're dealing with uh, quality people even today. Thanks Wonderful. for the opportunity, Eric. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you.